from Christian House of Faith, CHOF, and on CHOF Ministry Radio, it's Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. Praise the Lord, beloved. Welcome to CHUF Bible Fellowship. I'm Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr., Executive Director of Christian House of Faith, CHUF, and CHUF Ministry. I pray that your time with me will bring you love, joy, peace, wisdom, and knowledge. You know, beloved, there are so many people in the world today that go through situations where their backs are against the wall. And many of them say, how am I going to get out of this today? Beloved, today we will start our second part of our two-part series entitled, God Will Make a Way. And our focal text for the morning comes from Philippians 2, 13 through 14. I present to you Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. Our morning focal scripture reads this way. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Once again, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing. May God add blessings to the listeners and the doers of his holy word. In 2 Timothy 3.16, we'll find the word says, All scriptures is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. Beloved, you have to be willing to admit that you need cleansing from all unrighteousness that involves the sins of commission, sins of omission, sins of wrong attitudes, and the sins of faulty assumptions. Uh, The Lord only teaches the humble beloved, and he teaches them his way. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you at the proper time. You know, if you can't get a job, or you can't stay in a decent relationship with no one, or you're always in a bad mood, Believe me, these things will change if you humble yourself and stay under the right hand of God. You see, there are so many people that don't find the way out of their problems because they are not willing to humbly confess their sins and ask God to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. I personally had to find that out myself. And Since I have confessed my immoral ways to God and asked him to renew a right spirit in me, I now hold my head up proudly in Christ with thanksgiving. I now live a life that has me looking forward to each and every day with joy and happiness uh, and peace, uh, loyally committed to my foundation. Uh, I no longer hold my head down because of shame. Uh, I no longer have to look over my shoulders wondering, uh, doubting, uh, hiding, lying, or scared of what the day may bring because of my immoral living. Beloved, uh, ask the Lord to use your mistakes, inadequacies, and failures to be you know, more effective so that your lifestyle will become the comforting agent that ministers to others. Now, 
I want you to know that God will make a way when there seems to be no way when you fix your eyes on Jesus as the author and perfecter of your faith. We find in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run the endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Beloved, Jesus isn't the only way to heaven. Mm -mm, he's not the only way. But he is the perfect way to heaven. You see, God's will is found in Christ in following his ways. Uh -huh. Jesus' way is the perfect way because no person has ever completed 100% of the will of God as Jesus did. He's the way when there seems to be no way. Beloved, if you want to know the way to God, follow the person, the words, and example of the Lord. Mm -hmm. His ways are perfect and all his ways are peace. He's working in us to empower us to do everything God asks us to do. Uh, we find in Philippians 4, 13, Paul wrote, for well, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Beloved, ask the Lord to perfect whatever concerns you, regardless of the troubles you find yourself in. Allow the Lord to use your adversity to work patience, endurance, and greater Christ-likeness in all areas of your life. James 1, 2 through 5 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Wow, look at the end of verse 5 here. What a scripture, what a verse. He said, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke us for asking. Beloved, God wants us to come to him. Mm -hmm. He has no problem with giving us what we need. No questions asked. The only criteria that he requires is for us to have an open mind. We have to open up to him by confessing our sins, allow him to correct our damaged areas, become humble and stay humble as he bless us and directs us on the route he chooses for us to travel on. That's it. Beloved, God will make a way when there seems to be no way when we ask the Holy Spirit and others to intercede for us. Uh, I have people coming to me every day asking me to intercede with them and for them on certain situations. Mm -hmm. You see, there are too many people who try to find the way of their problems alone. But in Romans 8, 26, 27, Paul wrote, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Mm -hmm. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. So you see, what we find here is that it's okay to ask others and God to intercede on our behalf. It's okay. You see, this way, you can receive the maximum benefits of intercessory assistance in your time of need. Beloved, the Lord will find a way out of your fears, your problems with anger, your disappointments, your hurts, your unmet expectations, or needy situations. 
Maybe you're struggling to see how God might solve your financial, emotional, or social need. Beloved, if you allow God to come into your life full time, you can ask for intercessory help. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, God allows arbitration to provide a solution to every problem you may have. That's right. Now, I am warning you right now that selfish pride, arrogant pride, and an egotistical attitude will keep you on the outside looking for help. Mm -hmm. You see, in the kingdom of God, you can come in and, and let a believer arbitrate on your behalf. Mm -hmm. It's okay. God wants others that he has chosen to talk to you, to pray for you, to lead you out of your problems or your situations. God will make a way for you. Beloved, God will make a way when there seems to be no way when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and then he will provide all of our essential needs. Beloved, there are too many people who waste their lives using wrong priority thinking. Mm -hmm. Bad as I hate to say this, but we Americans are notoriously pursuing human concepts of success, but we're miserable failures before God. <laughs> it's sad but true. You see, Jesus wants us to focus on him, his kingdom and righteousness priorities. Uh, you see, when we uh, pursue the quantitative and the qualitative expansions of his kingdom, we'll experience his blessings that will supernaturally affirm God's ability to provide us with all our physical, our social, and our human needs. Uh, beloved, center your life more around God's priority than your own natural tendency. Ask the Lord to guide you to ways that you can align your lifestyle around his priorities instead of your own natural impulses and desires. Now, I want you to know that God will also make a way when there seems to be no way when we work in collaboration with other members of complementary spiritual gifts. You know, there are so many people that actually think that they can find the way out of their problems without working in synchronization with other members of Christ's body. Mm -hmm. You know, beloved, you would think that if a person's getting the same negative results time after time after time, that it's time to change the thought process. You think? You know, when I was a very young adult, uh, we call these type of people crash dummies. You see, the crash dummy is a person who is normally used by others to do something that they would not do. The crash dummy pretty much knows the risk that the task that they're about to take on will more than likely have negative results. The crash dummy, beloved, is usually gullible. There's someone that is trying to fit in or, or, or an attention grabber. Beloved, let me tell you right here, Satan loves crash dummies. Uh-huh. Crash dummies are Satan's pride and joy. As a matter of fact, hell has been filled with crash dummies every day, all day. Beloved, <laughs> you shouldn't want to be branded as a crash dummy. Plus, it's not a good thing, and that's not the category God wants us to be under. Mm-mm. -uh. You know, the crash dummy, their mentality reminds me of an old Frank Sinatra song. You know, the one that says, I did it my way. Beloved, being a crash dummy is in opposition to God's ways for success. Mm -hmm. Now, God wants us to intercede while we're here on earth. Mm -hmm. This is why God blessed the church with certain spiritual gifts. In Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, we find that Paul wrote about these spiritual gifts. Paul wrote, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith 
and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Beloved, we cannot fully know the way of God unless we're willing to work in collaboration with other gifted members of the body of Christ. Now, I want to strongly emphasize right here that God uses a whole range of spiritually gifted people to equip us, to motivate us, and to teach us what we need to know in order to come to full maturity. Every gift is essential for the kingdom of God. Now, I have found personally that there are so many people out there that criticizes different churches and ministries for serving their calling according to the will of God. It's sad to say that most of the sarcasm comes from those that are in your family and those that are in the church, and many of them have leadership roles. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad because the word of God says that our gifts come from the Holy Spirit of God. Not what a man or a woman thinks, but what the Holy Spirit of God says. Beloved, we must be supportive of each other's gift. We must remove the arrogant stigma that says my gift or title is more important or sophisticated than yours. Let me tell you, church leaders, that's arrogant pride. Yes. That type of attitude is destroying fellow clergy members. We need to be interceding together on behalf of the kingdom of God instead of defending our calling or our gifts. Mm -hmm. Beloved, we have to learn to walk in hand in hand. We have to come in unity. You know, I speak from experience. I have been under attack since I accepted my calling. I'm no different than many of my fellow clergy brothers and sisters who were worldly before they accepted their calling into the ministry. You know, many of you going to church this morning are going to sit up under a teaching or a sermon from an ex-alcoholic, an ex-convict, an ex inmate an ex woman abuser an ex prostitute an ex thief an ex drug addict now what makes these men and women qualified for their calling well i'll tell you what makes them qualified for their calling it's that two letter word X, E, X. The word X means something once associated with a former or earlier connection. They put their faith, belief, and trust in God, and he made a way for them to receive salvation. You know why? Because man or woman that is selfish and has self-pride will destroy the one that God is trying to use for the kingdom of God. You see, God no longer holds them in contempt. He has pardoned them. And now since God has qualified them, God has the power to approve them to receive his gift or gifts to assist them to arbitrate here on earth for the kingdom of God. Beloved, I too have an X in front of my previous immoral association. Oh, how I thank God for making a way for me to receive salvation. I thank God for qualifying me and approving me for my gifts. So regardless of what a man or a woman thinks or says, regardless of the boycotting, scrutinizing, and ostracizing, is God's grace and mercy that has granted me and my fellow clergy workers the entitlement to spread the word of God according to to the gifts he has provided us to arbitrate for our ministries, for our churches. <laughs> I am a sinner, but the best part about it, I've been saved by grace. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what you think, how you feel, 
God does the approving. Isaiah 43, 18 says, do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, coming from the Amplified Bible, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual conditions have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Colossians 3.10. Once again, coming from the Amplified, it says, And have put on a new spiritual self who is being continually renewed in true knowledge in the image of him who created the new self. Before receiving my calling, I must admit that I, I was ashamed of being associated with the brand X, but not today. You see that brand X symbolizes accomplishment. It's the visual form that I've been detached from my past immoralities. Uh, along with my fellow clergy brothers and sisters, uh, it's an honor to wearing the brand X. You see, the brand X allows us to continue to reap the blessings of God. Uh, anyone that receives the brand X today, I want to tell you that it allows you to be qualified and approved to receive joy. <laughs> happiness, uh-huh, and peace. You know, beloved, uh, people who try to find the way out of their own problems alone are going to lack some vital things that are necessary for completion in Christ. You see, the reason so many people fail to exercise the full benefits of God's way it's because they're unwilling to cooperate with the whole range of God's spiritually gifted people. Uh huh. You see, they rather listen to a feel-good message or a lie than to trust in the process of God. Uh, be loved. You got to trust the process. Uh, if you're distressed, then ask the Lord to help you. You know, get more well-rounded by working in cooperation with the full range of spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. God will make a way when there seems to be no way when we rely on the Spirit to fight our battles for us. We have to allow the Lord's Spirit to infuse us with His power, love, and discipline. We find in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We find in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Then he said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's army. You know, there are so many people who fail to find a way out of their difficulties because... They prematurely give in to discouragement, frustration, or even fear. Beloved, we have to wait on the Lord, and he will strengthen our hearts. Mm -hmm. You see, the Lord is strong and mighty. He'll deliver us from any problem we're facing with the power of his spirit. He's able to deliver us if we'll allow the spirit to fight the battle for us. You know, God will make a way when there seems to be no way when we asked him to help us to wisely choose the battles that are worth fighting. You know, there are many battles that are just not worth fighting. So we got to ask the Lord to help us recognize what's essential and what's non-essential. There are many times in traffic when it's just best to let that angry driver who's in a hurry pass on by. Mm -hmm. Beloved. You have to learn to stop trying to fight every little challenge that comes your way. You're wasting valuable energy on things that don't ultimately matter. So stop fighting with things that are conditioned not to listen to you. Stop fighting with things that have a made-up mind to do it their way. Stop fighting with things that won't listen to reason. 
be loved. God will give you the wisdom to know the best way to go if you're only asking. In James 1.5, James wrote, If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Beloved, trust the Lord to supply you with the knowledge, wisdom, and insight to walk in his ways regarding your relationships, activities, and ministries. Believe me when I say he'll give you supernatural wisdom that shows others how you're divinely inspired to evidence wisdom from above, which is considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Beloved, reject the earthly kind of wisdom that's unspiritual, envious, selfishly ambitious, and boastful. James 3, 13 through 17 says, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Beloved, ask the Lord to help you to put away the Machiavellian kind of thinking that the ends justify the means and trust the Lord's wisdom to guide you in every way. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning I ask you to provide for all that is needed as I walk along your appointed path. Lord God, open our eyes to see the way you're leading. Give us the understanding to take the right steps. Strengthen us with the patience to move at the right pace. And work within our words and actions to say and do the things in the right way. Lord God, I trust in you to do what no one else can do. In ways that no one else can work. Doing the wonders no one else can perform. Lord God, I thank you for making a way. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, the challenges of life are filled with unique and obscure characteristics for every individual. We must overcome the ambiguous by representing and presenting love to everyone. So today, reach out to someone you love and tell them you love them. Because telling them later just might be too late. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Please join Bishop Dr. W.F. Houston, Jr. each Sunday at 7 a.m. here on CHOF Ministry Radio. Come and get your Sunday started by feeding your spirit with a wholesome plate of spiritual food.